Welcome to Morrison Madness. I'm Don. This is Lachelle. Hello. Behind the cameras, George Lucas. Thank you for stepping in today, <laughs> filling in for our video guy. Um, so we thought that since tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day, and on St. Yeah. Patrick's Day, everybody is a little bit Irish. Doesn't, Everybody's doesn't Irish. Doesn't matter what country you're from, state you're from, island you're from. On St. Patrick's Day, everybody's a little bit Irish, right? Right. So absolutely, green beer, Irish <laughs> car bombs, right? Yeah. Four leaf clovers. Although you just you you don't have you uh, just you, have three leaves. Uh, this that one, one has, has four. four. Gotcha. Yeah, I couldn't find earrings that had four. These only have three, right? Yeah, you went all in on like you are shamrocked out. Well, I figured if we're gonna do. An episode for yeah. St. Patrick's I mean, McDonald's Day. is in on it. They got the shamrock shake. Yeah. So Good I'm, stuff. I'm wearing green. I'm sorry. I, I just, That's all right. I mean, I have shirts with shamrock. Then we but. can't pinch you, right? Is that one of those things you have to wear green on? Supposedly. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, so do you have any Irish actually for real? In yes. Your, yeah. My national. Yes. Are you kidding me? Well, I don't. I know you're Scottish. We know this because we had well, to go to Scotland. Well, if you think the Scots and the Irish and the English and the Welsh didn't just <laughs> intermingle like a bunch of mutts on, you know, <laughs> Viagra, you're you're mistaken. <laughs> There's people that get all indignant and and be like, "I'm Scottish, damn it!" Yeah, mm-hmm. Yep, sure you are. Look back. Even I mean, the entire island really is Nordic. They were you right. know taken over by the well and and the Anglo-Saxon. I mean, the the Romans came up. You know, and the Vikings came down, and so talk about mutts of the world right there. You, they've got it all. So you you know you're primarily Scottish. Yes. So do you know like kind of the well, and breakdown? my and my surname is right is Morrison Scottish. Right. I I don't know a hundred percent, but I okay. mean I didn't know if you've mostly, done that research. No, my dad started going down that path, but he did it for his side of the family, and not really my mom's. I mean, gotcha. my, my mom's has got. German, French, Irish. My dad's is mostly Scotch Irish. Somewhere in there, there is Native American. I don't, not a lot. Okay. Um, and this would have been on my mom's side. Okay. Um, Blackfoot Sioux. So I, okay. I couldn't tell you how much. And I'm not going to get into the percentages because if you say I'm wrong, people will have a conniption. Oh, right. You know. Right. You can't be one percent of something. Everything has to be divisible by, right? A certain whatever. I say thing. I'm one percent because that I, I've never really figured out the math. It's just the easiest way to say it. Right. But mine's different, so I well not different. Fifty, but, twenty-five, twelve and a half. Right. Six and three quarters. Right. You know, I mean, it, it's got to go down by those. Right. You can't be. Right. As much as people want to be half German, half Italian, half French. You, you can't have that many halves. No? No. Mm. No, probably. I'm not saying anybody wants to be those three halves. I just, <laughs> I just mean, You can't have three halves. No, that's true. So. Mathematically, it doesn't work. Right. So, now, which is, although which we is probably why, have somebody that's like a PhD in math. It's like, technically, we yeah, can... <laughs> right. With just the exact commingling on both sides, right. you could be 33%. So... And and we haven't done the the twenty three and me or the fifty six and you no the one eighty seven you know whatever spit in the cup right tell me what I am three hundred three hundred and twelve countries in the world and you came from this one right thing. no we haven't done that although we've talked about it maybe we'll do that at some point and reveal some information from it I don't know I'm my, more interested in the food part of that if we do it my dad was never able to trace all the way back to Scotland no oh. our lineage so. Um, mainly going off of the surname. That's the only place the surname comes from. Comes from. I mean, there there is a, a group of Morrisons in Australia, but that came from Scotland. Sure. Um, yeah, he just he ran out of couldn't find anybody online through like ancestry dot com and stuff that would go any farther back than God. I can't even remember New York. I think was really yeah. Do you remember kind of years? Like what years stuff came over or anything that way? No, no. I have no idea. Well, that's the thing. We couldn't figure out when they came over here. Gotcha. We couldn't. That's the part that we couldn't. He couldn't get back far enough to figure out when they first came over here. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. But that's why it was such a big deal and and probably the best gift that you ever gave me when you had that conference. You know, we didn't. We got married and we didn't really have a honeymoon. 
Well, you know? we had a family honeymoon that we went right. to the zoo and stuff. Yeah. Right, and the water park with the kids and stuff. But then right. the next year when you had that conference and, and we added on, you know, the 10 days and I got to spend a week in Scotland. I mean, that's still, of all the things, I loved going on the cruise and I've loved all the other little trips and stuff that we have taken. Right. That. You've always wanted to go to Scotland. That's and a, That was the greatest vacation thing. I have ever had in my life. It sure. was, it, and everybody over there was so amazing and the country was so beautiful. It really was. Yes. And going in the summer, so then the sun hardly sets is amazing as well. Yeah. I just, I can't say enough great things about the entire experience yeah so yeah it was beautiful and and you know having had that experience it just makes me more i don't want to say like proud but happy you know to to be scottish to know a little bit of my scottish heritage and i would think anybody would be proud of their feel more connected maybe right yeah you know i don't care if you come from Colombia or ghana or sure you know kazakhstan whatever sure you know, right. I mean, I'm, I'm proud to be an American, but I'm, I'm proud of my heritage. Right. So, right. and, and the, the antiquityness, I don't know what the proper word would be for that, that we saw over there, the, the castles that were, oh, you know, 400, 600 years old. And then right. the Neolithic sites that were thousands of years old yeah. that had Viking graffiti in yeah. them, you know, I mean, they're older than Stonehenge. I think they're seven thousand years old. They're older than the pyramids. Right. I mean, that kind of stuff is just incredible to me. And right. and I think that the UK does a great job of preserving yes. those sites. Yes. And I'm not saying that Egypt doesn't do a good job of preserving their sites or anything. Like we haven't that. been we there. Haven't. Right. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> I, well, I just don't want anybody to think that I'm I'm no, putting right. any other places down. I just right. the 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 stuff that we saw over there, and we did not go to Stonehenge. We went to a lot of sites that are similar right. to that. Um, they were amazing. They were incredible. I, I loved, I mean, we spent hours and hours and hours at them and it was, it was so incredibly, uh, uh, educational, yes. uh, you know? Yeah. I, and, and again, everybody over there was, was wonderful. Yeah. And it was interesting cause we even asked, we're like, how come Stonehenge is so popular and yet people don't realize that you have the same exact circle of stones in more than one place in Scotland, and and they didn't really have a good reason. It's a PR thing. Yeah, it, that it just never really was brought that forward in that way, or something that way, and it's just never really caught on. But they have them in Scotland, and they're actually older, right? Than Stonehenge. Yeah, Stonehenge isn't the oldest one. No, it it somehow is just the most popular one. It might, right. might be the easiest one to get to. It could be like the closest one to London or or whatever. Could I don't... be. Yeah, it could be. So. So that's that's kind of my. So you you were able to trace yourself back to New York. I, I believe so. I'd have to look your, at the books again, but when Dad and I were going your through your dad's them, side, yep, and your mom's side is a mix of everything, and you're not really sure from where, like years or how far back you. No, could trace I don't know that, that anybody. I, there might be somebody on her side of the family that has done that, but I, not anybody that's close to me where I remember sure. having those conversations. Sure. Did you grow up having? Things that then you later realize that, oh, that's a certain kind of nationality thing that you've no. just always done? No. Nope. So you, you've been more of a mix than what I have been. Until we went to <laughs> Scotland, I'd never had anything that I would have considered to be Scottish food. Oh, okay. So, I mean, we grow up eating basic American Midwest right. farm food. Right. You know? Which is very roasts. German, in all honesty. Well, the, a lot of the Midwest is is German mix. I mean, there's but that very German influenced for the Midwest food, and part of that's because of what can be grown. I, there here. might have been a little German on my dad's side of the family too. I don't sure, but yeah, I mean, you know, we grew up eating roast and and uh, meatloaf and right, you know, spaghetti and tacos and right, all Americanized yes. styled stuff, right. So what about you? So. Mine's a little bit different. Um, my dad is actually 100% Danish. And that's the people that wear the wooden shoes, right, and have the windmills? No. No. No, that's Dutch. Dang it. <laughs> so close. So we do have windmills <clears throat> for Danish. The windmill is a popular thing. The Little Mermaid is the other big story. Um, Hans Christian Andersen. I actually do know where Denmark is. I know it's you right do. Ab- it's right above Germany. It's actually considered one of the Nordic states. Correct. Nordic countries. Right. It's a it's a kind of a cross between Nordic and German. It's very Germanic influenced as well. Um, but the Little Mermaid is probably the most popularized component. Hans Christensen? 
Hans Christian Andersen. Hans Christian Andersen. There you the go. The fairy tales all are primarily Danish. Right. Yes. All come from, from Denmark. Um, but that was actually an argument I used when I was little when I wanted to go see The Little Mermaid in the theater because we didn't go to the theater very often. And I was like, it's part of my heritage. I should get to go. And then my mom was like, well, we can't really argue with that. <laughs> so I got to go see it in the theater. <laughs> but so, yeah, my dad is 100% Danish. However, his side of the family, like tracing his family history back, they've been in the United States for hundreds of years, several generations. I can't, I can't remember the exact, if I think it was like his great or great, great grandparents came. So for several generations, they've been in the U.S., but they primarily moved straight here to Iowa and grew up in the Kimmelton Elkhorn area. And so everybody was Danish. And it, that if you know anything about the state of Iowa, Elkhorn is a, a very Danish settlement. They still celebrate, uh, Tivoli Fest around Memorial Day weekend, things like that. Tivoli Fest. Tivoli. Tivoli. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, and I grew up doing a lot of Danish traditional things that I didn't know was Danish traditional things. So simple things as far as open face sandwiches at confirmations, funerals, graduations. And when we, when you think of an open face sandwich, what is an open face sandwich? It's a piece of bread or toast right. with a piece of meat on it and yeah. then mashed potatoes on it and then gravy on top of that. Right. Which is actually kind of an open face sandwich. If a true Danish open face sandwich has a bunch of toppings on it and you would eat it with a fork, right? But the Danish open face sandwiches are the snack Danish open face sandwiches that we would have, which is literally a slice of bread with butter and then one slice of cheese or one slice of meat. And then you cut those diagonally so you have little triangle sandwiches, but you would have one that had meat on it and one that had cheese on it. And you don't put them together to make a sandwich. You eat them separately. Like it, it was funny when people would come that were not from the Danish heritage and they'd be like, that's Oh, this, that's cool. That's this guy. Because you can choose what cheese you want, which meat you want to make your sandwich. And everybody that is from the Danish heritage would kind of look at you and go, yeah, that's not really what you're supposed to do, but go for it. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, that was one of the things that I didn't realize people didn't do that. Like that, that was so common from our, gatherings you know all the confirmations all the graduations all the funerals that we had well, yeah those. you you grew up eating a lot more traditional foods than what yes. i did yes i mean pancake balls <laughs> able skivers yes yes shout out to laura if you're listening because she always posts every year for christmas that she's doing her able skivers and her able skiver pan and we always like to talk about able skivers and not every time but <laughs> but most of the time when your parents come down to visit at least one of the days your dad will make able skivers for breakfast yeah and they are delicious. We have two able skiver pans. They're cast iron, specifically designed to make these yep. pancake balls. Yep. And there's a specific way to make them. And right. then you can make them with stuff in them. So then the traditional, quote unquote, traditional side of stuff is that, like they'd put plums or prunes in the middle of them. But you can do other stuff in the middle. Um, but it's not as traditional, evidently. Right. We don't tend to put anything in the middle. And then you can eat them lots of different ways. You can have them with syrup or just powdered sugar or whatever else that way. So Didn't you and I make a batch one time with little chunks of sausage? Yeah, I think in so. In them and they were delicious. They were delicious. I'm sorry if that wasn't traditional, but they were. No, that was really good. They were damn yeah, good. we we did. We took a little like little chunks of little smokies or something and put them in the middle um, as we were cooking them. So they they take a while yes. to cook. Um, but anyway, and then some other Danish stuff that I didn't realize were necessarily traditional Danish until I was actually doing a research project my senior year, senior year, junior year, junior year of high school, um, and found out all these things that I do that are Danish that I didn't realize was Danish, like dancing around the Christmas tree. Although I had a feeling that that one was because we didn't do that at my mom's side, but we did do it at my dad's side where we would hold hands and walk around the Christmas tree while singing Christmas carols. Well, and you have special, specific Danish style ornaments that you put on the tree yep. and the Danish flag that's on string that yep. goes around the tree. Yep. And, and then there's a specific song that we sang in Dane. So then, and I can't say it correctly. So I, it's it, for those of you that are Danish, you can laugh at me, but the way I would sing it, because I never really learned Danish was new again, new again. So, which means the new year is coming we're celebrating that. It, it, I would have to actually look kind of at it to really remember what the real full meaning is. 
but that is, I would always ask my grandma, I'm like, what does this mean again? How do you say that? Can you say it again? Because I always wanted to really learn it and I couldn't that, really do it well. So that, re- that reminds me. So, I mean, we're wearing green for St. Patrick's Day, but yeah. because we're talking about our nationality, I'm surprised you're not wearing your sweatshirt that says, Ooga. Ooga. Right. Because <laughs> yes. that's Danish. Yes. And right? I specifically it's, it's not, ordered that. Like some people it. are like, is, is that like because your husband was in the Marines? Ura. No, <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's not Ura. No, but you wouldn't when you read it. If you are totally not, oh yeah, it doesn't read. Danish, it doesn't read Ura. No, it's H Y G G E. So you would think that it's Huggy, Higgy, Higgy, <laughs> something along. But it's Huga is how you pronounce it, and it's that that idea of just relaxed comfort. So sitting down in front of a fireplace with a cup of hot chocolate and just cuddling up in a blanket right it's her extra large oversized comfy sweatshirt that she wears when she's relaxing around the house yes and i specifically ordered it to do that around the house for that reason because of that and i showed it to my dad and my dad just laughed because he thinks it's (laughs) funny that i i love that side of things um but yeah so we would we had a lot of danish stuff you know it that's kind of one of the components my dad would say danish sayings takfama thanks for the meal uh tikim yum probably mispronouncing that as well which is a hurry up let's go something along those lines <laughs> so and that again it was just part of who he was it was almost like a dadism for us you know we, i didn't really i didn't even grow know. up drinking scotch like my dad didn't drink scotch <laughs> i don't so um but then on my mom's side she is half danish half german and had one great grandmother that was irish so we joke about how i'm three quarters German, you mean three or three Dane. quarters Dane, one quarter German, one percent Irish, which I know is not the correct percentage, but I do actually have a little Irish in me. Um, but the other part was all German, and we actually, again, we in my hometown, our junior year, you had to do a family heritage project, so you were supposed to research your family heritage, and so my brother researched a bunch of his of our family heritage, and actually did the whole family tree back to the fourteen hundreds. Um, and like my mom's dad, so, and again, um, that side of the family is, he was, he was German. We actually have the family crest ring from that that's been passed down. Um, I I think my brother has it. Um, but then the, the Danish side, I feel like we got back to the 15 or 1600s in Denmark, I believe. Although now I feel like there's more research I could probably go back farther if I needed wanted to needed to right could um but I don't have that stuff here I don't think so I don't I don't know where to start necessarily with that um but yeah we we did a lot of Danish stuff then on both sides of the family and then that German kind of pulling in there as well so well whatever your nationality is yeah tomorrow everybody's a little bit a little, a little Irish, Irish so Happy St. Patrick's Happy Day to Saint everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, you know, obviously, again, I'm proud to be an American. I would hope that 100%, yeah. people that live here are proud to be Americans. And then also proud of your heritage, proud of where you came from. Yeah. You know, it, that, it's... Whatever you do know of it. And it might just be what your parents But did. that's what made America great is we had all of these different, yes. you know, countries, people coming from all of them, bringing... Right a little bit of their culture, and then while they tried to hold on to some of that culture, it gets blended in with other cultures. Right. You know? But I think part of it, too, is, you know, we had, like, I have family traditions that were passed down, and but you had family traditions, and then you created your own as well. Like, one of your big family traditions with your kids was on Thanksgiving, you had turkey pot pies. Yeah, so then you I didn't could play wanna, games. I didn't want to spend hours making a huge meal and cleaning up. I wanted to spend right. time with them. Right, and so then that's one of the things that they enjoy doing is <clears throat> having turkey pot pies and playing games <clears throat> for Thanksgiving. So, you know, that's one of the, the big components that we like to kind of highlight with the holidays like this is thinking about what are the traditions that you've had or doing or can make for yourself at this point. Um, so then it feels a little bit different, especially this year with COVID and what you can do. <coughs> so I wanted to real quick say um, something about if anybody ever gets the chance to go back to wherever they're from, yeah. right, and, and spend a few days there, a week there, whatever, the best part of what we did on that trip was couch surfing. Yeah. 
the fact that we got to go and stay with people in their homes. Yeah. We didn't do the regular touristy stuff. We got right. to spend time with people in their environment, in their culture, their day-to-day stuff. A- yep. And that, to me, was the, the best part yep. of the whole thing. And again, all of the people that we met over there, even the people um, yep, in Germany, mm-hmm. everybody was so wonderful. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, I think that kind of wraps this show up. Yeah. So until next time. Next time. Happy Thanksgiving. Or no, not Thanksgiving. St. <laughs> Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs>